All right, folks, back on the boss man show, friend of the show. For more head state, Coach Preston Spradlin here. They've got a big win last against Tennessee State. Coach, how you doing up there more here today, man? Man, doing great. Doing great. We're uh, we're enjoying a off day, which we haven't had in a, in a long time. You know, played a played an OBC game on a Monday night last night, as you mentioned. Uh, COVID reschedule from a from a game that was actually supposed to be our second conference game a few weeks ago, and so. Uh, the league decided we'd play Monday makeup games. And so what that presents is three games in five days and a bunch of tired Eagles, man. But, uh, you know, we were able to take care of business, three games at home and uh, get the, get the, the win streak going, continuing with that and uh, enjoying an off day before we now hit the road for three games on the road uh, coming up this week. But doing well, man. Doing well. Appreciate you having me on here. Anytime, Coach. Tell me this, man. Are you on a nine-game winning streak so far? What's been the key to that winning streak? And I know you have some talented guys. What in your mind has been the key to this streak to get you guys going the way you have so far the last nine games? Well, I think it's uh, just just taking it day by day, you know, just focusing on getting better and, and understanding that every game is a little bit different. And, um, you know, we're, we're really adamant. You know, I'm a teacher by trade. So, uh, you know, I, I, I use this as my classroom and the film room as my – opportunity to really teach guys and so we we watch film after every game the next day before we move on to to a practice or another opponent even if it is three games in, in five days and so I think that's where our team grows I think that's where you know we take um, lessons from the the previous game and, and as a staff you know we really try to to figure out hey what what's something that we didn't do well or we did do well in in, in Thursday's game that uh, is going to be applicable moving forward to uh, Saturday's game. And so just trying to find some consistency there to, to give the guys confidence and then just addressing those things. But I think, uh, you know, the, the, the key thing is once you get past Christmas and you're into conference play, uh, being efficient is just really important, you know, and it's not just the offensive, defensive efficiency, shooting efficiency, it's, it's daily efficiency. You know, can you, can you show up? Can you be on time? Can you be mentally um, present? Uh, so that you're not having to reset drills and, and all those types of things. You know, the film room becomes all that more important because you don't want to spend as much time on your legs on the court. Uh, so it's a big mental game and uh, just challenging our guys uh, to do that. And I think uh, that's a key to our success is they, they bought into that and they continue to get better uh, with that aspect of the season. And, and it's kind of why we're able to, to maintain the, the streak right now. And I think you played a good non-common schedule too, Coach Spradlin, because I'm like seeing different styles early helps, you know, and giving you that callus for the OVC play because you know you're going to deal with a Belmont, a Murray State coming up here. Even the teams who are not those teams, they're tough every night. Even Tennessee State can, can give you trouble with, 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 they, with their size there. So talk about the non-con, getting you know, the different styles of play to get ready for what's in OVC, that, that gauntlet from now through Evansville. Yeah, no, that's a great that's a great uh, question there. I mean, you look at our non-conference. We played uh, right now as it sits, two top twenty-five teams. Um, you know, the number one team in the country is where we opened our season. You know, at Auburn, uh, which I've, I've got to say, boss man, is probably the, probably the best college basketball atmosphere that I've ever been a part of. And I, I spent five years at Kentucky, and and just um, that that atmosphere at that small Auburn arena you know, with uh, those fans right there on the court is, is really electric. And uh, they came out, punched us in the mouth, and we fought back. And so, again, you learn things about your team early on. You know, we didn't get that win, uh, but they're really good. They've continued to get better, and, and so have we. And uh, Coach Pearl and I have stayed in touch since then, and I've appreciated that uh, about, you know, our journey of our season and his as well. Uh, but, you know, then you play a really good Mississippi State team, who's a lot like, you know, Murray State. You know, that's kind of how they play, to, you know, to – Two traditional bigs, electric guards, a lot of screening actions and, and things, and you just got to be physically tough. And so you learn a lot of lessons in that game. Then you play a really good Xavier team who, to be honest with you, we kind of felt like was a uh, was was a Big East version of us um, in a lot of the ways that they did things. And so we did a lot of nice things. We won the second half in that game and, again, played in another really difficult road environment up there in Cincinnati. And so, you know, those things are all really important. You know, of course, you want to win those games. Um but we tell our guys all the time, every, every, every game is a gift, you know, whether you win them or not, you know, there's a lesson to take away from it. And that non-conference schedule being tough, being difficult uh, certainly provides that for us. And you're exactly right. It's a big reason that we're able to, to march through the season and, and play on the road and in conference play and, and not be shaken, um, you know, by the elements of, of playing in someone else's arena. Speaking of Auburn, that's kind of our second SEC team here in Atlanta is Auburn. So did you think they'll be as good, good as they are? Uh, did you see that when you played them this year that you that'll be this good as they're shown to be number one in the country now? 
Yeah, you know, I, did I think they'd be number one in the country? I don't know about that. But when we walked away from uh, from that game, you know, we had spent a lot of time on that Auburn game as as they did us because it was the first game, and scouting is really important for our staff, and uh, we do a good job with that. And so we had actually gone back and watched more from uh, Coach Pro's Final Four team two years ago or, or maybe three years ago. I can't remember right now because we felt like the personnel fit that team. Uh, the way the style of play on both ends of the court. And we were right because uh, that's how they're playing. That's how they're defending uh, offensive schemes and things like that are, are much more similar to what they did last year. And uh, and we thought when we walked away from that game, man, that team right there is as good as the team that made it to the final four. Um, and so, yeah, we thought they were they were pretty special. And, and when they play that way um, and, and they get it going um, and they just play with such confidence they are really, really tough to beat. And so, you know, happy for those guys because, uh, man, what a job Coach has done down there, Coach Pearl. And, uh, you know, and he's done it with transfers uh, here lately. And I think that's a big key for all of us in the in this business right now is adapting to the transfer portal. And I'm proud of the way that we've done it. And, um, and, and he's certainly done a great job with it as well. Kentucky's done an unbelievable job with it. But I think managing uh, the transfer portal and the changes that are happening in our game are, are really important. And uh, kudos to those guys that are, that are finding a way to have great success this year in year one of, of dealing with that. Most definitely. And, and man, Preston, you all won 18 in a row at home. Johnson Arena's been rocking. Man, tell me about the streak winning at home 10 in a row there this year. 18 going back to last year. Talk about the importance of defending at home court and the, the fans of Moorhead and how they give you all that boost up there, man. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's special. You know, it's special. You know, you talk about the other night, uh, you know, we had an ESPN news game Thursday night. Belmont comes into town. And uh, the entire lower bowl was just pretty much filled with students. And it was absolutely rocking in there. They, they make an impact. You know, they make an impact. You got whether it's uh, teams missing free throws or, uh, you know, our, our team, um, you know, just gaining momentum and getting energy from the crowd, getting into it. And, you know, and uh, so it, it's huge. It's huge to be able to do that. It's really important uh, that you do protect home court. And, um, you know, and so the, the proud of our guys for taking pride. I think that's a pride thing, right? I think it shows love for your school, shows appreciation for the people that are there and the community when you uh, you have a little added edge and a little more urgency uh, to, to protect your home court. I think that shows great respect for, for where you're going to school and where you get the opportunity to work. And Coach uh, Janar Bro, man, that guy's amazing, man. Offensively, defensively, uh, leadership wise, affecting the game multiple ways. Talk about his impact on your team and where you see his growth going from here because I think he's a, a great player already as a young guy. He kind of reminds me of John Collins to a two degree or, or a younger Dwight Howard with his activity on the blocking shots, you know, yeah. the, coming up for errors from guys on the guards' play, so clean up the back end. So tell me about that young man. We see his arc being as he keeps getting better in your program and developing. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously just uh, just extremely talented offensively, and, uh, you know, has even expanded his game. You know, we've got some things now where, you know, we get him the ball in the high post and, uh, you know, he's, he's shown his range a little bit more this year. He's been able to drive the ball, get some counter moves in there, uh, just extremely gifted offensively, improving as a passer, but, you know, which is really important because you know, he's at the top of everyone's scouting report now. He's not sneaking up on anyone and each team – is going to have a different scheme each and every night as to just how they're going to try to, uh, you know, make things difficult for them. Nobody's just going to let us throw the ball into them and play one-on-one. -on -one. They're going to make it really hard to get it there. Um, and then they're going to try to get it out of his hands. And so he's just, you know, he's growing uh, as a passer and understanding the game and, and, and um, you know, and, and being able to, to make the right play out of those passes or, excuse me, out of those situations, which is hard. It's a hard thing because people aren't making it easy for him. Uh, but I think his maturity is getting there. You know, I think he's really growing because, uh, you know, at the beginning of games, obviously we want to go to him. We want to see, we want the, our, the opponent to show their hand as to what their plan is so that we can make adjustments as a staff. And so he's gotten off to some slow starts this year uh, that have actually resulted in, in big games. And I think that shows maturity because he just keeps chipping away, making the adjustments um, and, and doing the things he needs to. And so that's great growth. But I would say defensively is a big thing. Um, you know, I challenged and I, but, uh, you know, in the off season, I said, you know, I think we need to strive for you to be OBC player of the year, but even more importantly, we need to strive for you to be defensive player of the year. And, um, you know, obviously I think he's at almost 30 double doubles within his career here, 13 or 14 of them already this year at six blocks last night against Tennessee state. And so, you know, we're, we're climbing the rankings, um, uh, of getting back up to being number one in the league in defense. And, uh, he certainly got a, a lot to do with that because, uh, it just gives our guys great confidence when they're guarding on the perimeter 
to contest shots a little bit more, run guys off the line. Uh, when you know you've got somebody back there that can erase some of those mistakes and meet people at the rim and make it difficult. And so uh, really, really, really proud of them for being able to do that because it's a big anchor to your defense when you got a guy that's capable of getting, you know, six block shots, you know, uh, double, double and, and rebounds and, um, and then, you know, making some good plays with his assists as well. And uh, coach, uh, also to Lon Cooper, man, he's taking care of the ball for you. His turnover ratio is really, really high there. Uh, to- <laughs> Because you want to offer those live ball turnovers. He's doing a good job of that, getting y'all, getting y'all your, your offenses easily there. So talk about his impact being a leader on the court with the, with the ball and saying, setting the table for you guys. Yeah, he is a special player. You know, this is uh, this is year three uh, with us, with Talon. And, um, you know, I think his leadership has has really improved. You know, you take a look at last year, he, he led us in minutes, but he came off the bench. And that was just the, the right decision for our team. And I think um, – you know, he he kind of he, he accepted that. He said, hey, man, whatever it takes for us to win. And I think that showed great humility. It's a, it's a big reason we had great success last year. Uh, but, you know, obviously he's our starting point guard. And, and uh, even though he played the starter minutes last year, he's top 10 in the country right now in assists. Um, he's keeping us organized. He's creating easy shots for everyone. And, um, you know, our guys feed off of him, whether it's Chennai inside, it's our, it's our guards on the perimeter, you know, getting easy uh, catch and shoot plays, but he's just a really gifted passer. And I'll say this about Talon, he's probably got the highest basketball IQ of any player that I've ever coached. And that, you know, it's 13 years, including five of them at Kentucky. I just think his feel for the game is, is, is really exceptional. We joke all the time that uh, as a staff, like one of these days, we're going to fight for, for him to whoever we get on, you know, whether he's on my staff one day or he's going to be on one of my assistants when they become head coaches, we're all going to be fighting over him because, uh, he just got such a gift in his vision and his feel for the game. And uh, you're seeing that this year with the confidence that he's playing with and, and everyone feeding off of it. I think Janad being inside and Talana outside helps Trey Hollowell hit those bombs from downtown. Talk about yeah. kind of just about the passing. If Janad's a really double team, you got, hey, get them in rotation. You're going to get your man, <laughs> Trey, knocking down some bombs for you. So talk about his impact as well, how Talana and Janad helps him as well. Well, you know, we've, we've got great balance. You know, we play the game inside out. Obviously, you've got a, you get the best post player in the league uh, inside. But uh, and that was important, right, that we surrounded uh, Janai um, and, and gave Talon outlets uh, with guys who could really shoot the ball this offseason. And uh, Trey was the, was the first commitment that we got uh, via the transfer portal and Kentucky guy that we were able to bring back. And um, and what a gift he's been. You know, he um, he was able to hit the thousand point mark the other night. Uh, which was really special against Belmont in a nationally televised game at home. And um, I'm really thankful to be his coach, to be able to, to be there for him, uh, you know, because obviously he didn't score all thousand of those points here at Morehead State. He scored a bunch of them at Walford, uh, but he sur- certainly scored the ball for us here. And, man, he just a, he's an electric offensive player, you know, and he's one of those guys. I mean, he could hit five straight threes. He could miss three straight, but he thinks the next five are going in. And uh, he can really put points on the board in a hurry. And he's really improved as a passer, as a decision maker, uh, which is part of the reason that he came here. We wanted to develop the rest of his game to help him, you know, play professionally when this is done. And um, he's really getting better as a defender, too, taking pride in that. But he's just been a joy to coach. And uh, he gives us great balance on the perimeter um, and gives gives Talon some outlets when we're, we're playing ball screen coverage and our ball screen offense and, you know, Janai is commanding a lot of attention. It, it puts a lot of pressure on the defense when you got a guy behind the ball that can really fill it up like uh, like uh, Trey can. And you got a young man, Trent Scott, uh, you signed with you guys. Tell us about that young man and what do you bring to your program next year and years to come. Yeah, man, I'm glad you mentioned my boy Trent, and I am so thrilled for him. Uh, I tell you, uh, it, 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 it's funny you mentioned Talon and now Trent because uh, so many similarities between the two of those guys from the time they were in high school to uh, the way their recruitment went. And um, we see a lot of uh, Talon in Trent. We think, uh, we think that Trent you know, could become uh, very much what Talon is for us down the road. And, uh, you know, a blessing that, you know, those guys will hopefully be able to spend a year or two together young Trent and, and older Talon and, and, and get an opportunity to learn from a guy like him. But he's a big guard, which is you look at our roster, you know, the smallest guard we have on our roster is 6'2", and the majority of our guys are 6'3", are 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, six, and so length is really important for us, and Trent certainly fits that mold. Uh, but he's, he's a 6'4", really athletic, can really shoot it, 
a great feel for the game and great passer, great competitor, um, but even better person. You know, he's got a great, great story in recruiting that, uh, you know, he wasn't a shoe circuit guy. He kind of played in, in some offshoot uh, deals in Atlanta. Really, we saw him play there the most. And uh, he had some opportunities once he started uh, blowing up and, and playing really well. And some shoot, you know, some bigger programs tried to pull him away in the middle of the summer, but he had so much loyalty um, and, and enjoyed where his recruitment was at, particularly with us. That um, he stayed true to his to his AAU program, and and uh, that that really meant a lot to us. You know that, that he wasn't out there chasing big offers and and going for the the superficial things. You know he was looking for the right fit, and he found that here with us. Oh, no doubt, man. I had to mention that young man. I, I love a guy who played here in Atlanta. I knew he played here a lot, so I wanted to make sure he shot him out for that as well. You need it yeah. for me. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yes, we're pressing. Thank you for your time, buddy, as always, man. I'll be cheering for you as always, man. Best luck to you. Hope you all stay safe, stay healthy, uh, and do, do good in Evansville, man. Get the, bring, bring it home again, buddy. Well, we sure appreciate it, brother. And uh, listen, uh, hopefully we're doing another one of these interviews after, after a championship this year. We've got a long ways to go. Uh, but I like the direction that we're headed, and I certainly appreciate you always taking interest in our program. Anytime, brother. You be safe, man. All right. Thanks, boss. See you, buddy.